that's by far the worst matchup I've seen in a long time. I've never seen a team play as bad as that on offense. Even being on a 3-13 three thir- three my last year in Philadelphia, it was never that bad. What's the worst part of it? If I said to you, Barrett, you watched the worst game you ever saw yesterday, what stood out as the worst of the worst? The lack of discipline this team displayed. Uh, it, it wasn't as though they weren't trying hard. But the lack of discipline they displayed, the lack of technique, there was nothing that they could fall back on to really put them in a position to be successful. I mean, there were so many times where this team had the opportunity to make some plays, and it was something dumb like a drop ball or or a guy jumping off sides that would put him behind the eight ball again. Those are things you can't have. Um, those are things that, you know, as a championship team, you don't have. You don't do. Start where you played, offensive line. Uh, Barber, Kelsey, Gardner, those three guys, your reaction? They played very, very um, inconsistent, to say the least. You know, it, it, you know, when you're on the offensive line, you tend more to have that cohesion and, and the collective. Uh, the, when you play as collective as opposed to playing individually, you can hide some of the deficiencies that you have at the offensive line. They couldn't because they haven't played together long enough. Now, I'm not a big fan of Chip Kelly going in and changing those guys around because if you do that, you still have to start all over again and, and, and go through the same bumps and bruises and, and the same pain that you're going to go through right now. So I think it's more so the fact that they need to play together and really start to learn what it takes to have that cohesion in, to, between each other in order to play better. Not to say that they're the greatest athletes in the world, not to say they're the best players in the world, but when you have an offensive line that and playing as bad as that, and start to get to know each other so you can you know, hide some of the deficiencies by calling calls that will better help you play the position. You know, uh, There are times when you know you could, you could bring the backside guard front side on a blocking technique that would have helped them get through some of the situations that Dallas put them in. Linebackers line up in one place, and as the snap count went on, they moved to another place. So there's a call that you can make to bring everybody so you can pick that, that um, linebacker up. But if you don't know, you haven't experienced it together as an offensive line unit, then you won't, you, you won't know to make those type of calls. And they'll make those adjustments um, like today and as the season goes forward in order to get better. So that, that's an interesting point. So this is something that's fixable. It's not that these guys are just horrendous players because they've looked really bad the first two weeks. There's a lot of continuity issues with three guys who have never played together. That's definitely the case. Definitely the case. And even, you know, with the, with the guard and, and, and tackle playing together, uh, I can remember on a play I was watching, they were running um, zone play to, to the left, to Jason Peters' side. And, you know, it was just as plain as they were. Barbary didn't go with Jason Peters on the play and the end slanted. Well, if they had made a call in which they would bring that tackle and guard a combo block, then they could have picked up the whole thing, but they didn't know to make that call because they didn't play together. And once you play together, you get that cohesiveness. Then you start thinking of light and you see certain things. Who, who makes that react Bear, in Bear, who makes that call? Because I, I, I remember the play you're talking about. I remember the play you're talking about. Uh, you know, when the ants landed in, yeah, yeah, and, and, and Peters, Peters alone. yeah, Peters is out there, and he felt like the guy, the guard was going to pick that guy up, and there was no guard to be had. Who makes that call? That's a that's a call that any any one of the guys can make the call. Whoever sees it, and and, and you know, realistically, it's a guard. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a uh, your veteran player does it, and it would have to probably be Jason Peters because he's been, he's played the longest, he's seen the most looks, and, and he's the more experienced out of the two. So if he had brought in, um, Barbary with him and said, Barbary, hey, let's swoop outside, let's get this block outside, and, you know, Barbary went with him, picked up that end, and then yeah, from that end, um, you know, he continued to on to the linebacker. That would have actually been a big play. They'd have turned the corner. They had got up, and it would probably been probably a twenty yard run because there was nobody else there to, to replace them. So does so Peters the, take for granted that Mathis just had that feel and knew it, and maybe Peters isn't a vocal guy, and now he's got a new guy. He's got to open up a little bit more and change a little bit his ways. Absolutely, that's exactly what has to happen. That's the type of thing that you learn for being around your teammates, being around the guy that's lined up next to you. Once you get those type of of, 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 you know, it's almost like a, a second sense, you know, of, oh, all right, this is about to happen. I know that Jason is going to do this. So if Jason does this, I know that I have to bring my butt with him and, 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 and take this block to the next level. 
And once they start getting those type of things, this offensive line will play a lot better than, than they look. Though they are not as good as the guys they replace, they are still feasible enough to go in and play well if they all were on the same page. And a lot of the times, this offensive line, what they were on the same page. Well, and, and Barrett, let's be honest, uh, and I, t- I brought this up earlier, I know they didn't play well and everyone's gloom and doom. If we remember last year, I think we were having the same conversation about what's wrong with Shady. Is something wrong with him? He could not get going in the run game either. I think it was about four or five games before he really got going. And, look, the Eagles had all sorts of issues early on their offensive line last year when Kelsey got hurt, uh, a couple injuries across the front. You know, uh, Johnson was out with the suspension. So this is something that goes back to last year. They had issues up front early on in the season. Yeah, and, and, and to be honest, if we're going to run the same run game we did with Shady, why let Shady – Especially with you know the, the hindsight being that Kiko Alonso may be out for the rest of the rest of the season. It's not it's not solidified yet, but he may be out for the rest of the season. So um, you know <laughs> we, we're looking back now and saying, all right, is Chip Kelly doing everything that he can do to make this team better? Did you know trading him, trading Shady, make this team Uncle Murray a better player? And shady. I mean, at this point, we're going to have to start questioning some decisions they made. You know, as far as the talent that he's brought in to replace the, the time-tested talent they left. Uh, so Bear, those are things you know that we have to talk about. Bear Brooks is with us. Uh, Breakfast on Broad six to eight, the Comcast Network. I'm sure uh, a lot of. But you know, a couple hours after now, you heard Chip Kelly. He said yesterday, "I'm going to evaluate everybody, including the quarterback." Um, you know, you look at the offense, you just said it. You, you can't start replacing these guys two games in because they are going to have to re continuity with guys. They're learning that now. Then you make switches. They're going to scratch. But what about at the skill spots? Uh, is there anything that you see uh, is the crack missing wide receivers? Um, you know, I said before, look, the wide don't scare. So, uh, that's a big problem. Skill position, what do you see in there? Well, they have a handle of the total offense as, as well as I thought he would be. I thought he'd be further along in his maturation process in this all time when if he went to the second or third read, I mean the third or fourth read, that he would have picked up on for being to Deshaun in the end zone. At no point was Zach Ertz open or, 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 or separate enough to, to the bad place ball. And I, he, he heard this because, you know, he felt pressure going down on him. But back and, and knew the offense the way he should, then he just saw that um, Cooper would have opened up in the back of the end zone uh, in, in a crossing pattern. And also, Josh Huff ran the best, basically the same play that Trey Burton ran uh, for the touchdown in Green Bay. It was virtually the same route. It was just a different um, personnel package where Josh Huff took the place of the tight end in, in, you know, out, out in the slot position in which he was going to run across the formation and the, his guy that was, had him man-to-man would have had the bow out as they did against um, Green Bay and he'd have been wide open there to virtually fall into the end zone. But he didn't – he didn't really uh, look at it and, and, and really isn't progressed far enough to, to wait on that uh, pattern to develop. So those are things that you, that he could have done better as a quarterback. As for the specialist guys, you just got to stop all these drops. You know, Cooper had a bad drop. Miles Austin had a bad drop. Matthews had about two drops. All counting, there was about eight drops that this team had within the last two games. It's really putting them behind the buck because if you don't make those catches – as you see, you go three and out. When you do make those catches, the offense stays on time. They stay on the field. And then your defense have to, doesn't have to play the 80 plays that they played this last week. There was 80 defensive plays in the game against Dallas, as opposed to the offense 65 game. It's supposed to be the total opposite um, and, you know, in a Chip Kelly offense. So if these guys don't become more consistent in their techniques, catching the ball, and cohesiveness, this will be a very, very, very long season. Uh, Barrett, give me your thoughts on Chip Kelly, the play caller. Yes, he was asked today whether or not he thought Dallas knew the plays they were running. He said no, but then he kind of followed up by saying, we're running the same plays. I mean, so it, it, it's not like he was making it like, well, look, we're getting real creative. He's basically saying we're running the same plays that we've run in the past. They're just not executing. So your thoughts on on Chip Kelly, the play caller. You play in this league. You know these coaches are smart. They figure you out. They make adjustments. Is that, is that what is happening with this team? Well, Jimmy, I let Kelly have to take it on the chin and, and, and really make a self-evaluation. Um, 
he didn't put his guys in the best position to be successful. That's what a coach does. Coach puts his, his personnel in the best position to make plays. And a lot of the times those guys weren't in position to make plays because they weren't put in good positions to make the plays. On defense, you know, Coach Davis had some opportunities where he could have gotten Maxwell a little help on a play here, a play there, or uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Um you know, running plays that are more conducive to the personnel he has on the offensive line. Maybe you run a lot more zone uh, man plays where, like, power plays where you can have a double team on the front side and pull the back side, and maybe you'll get a number count that's, that's better for the guys, um, better for, for the running back to read then. You know, if you run power or oversized power, then you're trying to get a number count in which you have three guys on one side of the line of scrimmage and then you have four on the other side. Those are the three, the three, um, the side where only three defenders are, but the only way you can do that is almost by a misdirection or pulling a guy to the front side instead of just trying to scoop to the, or, or run into the teeth of the defense. Those are all situations where Chip Kelly has a man up, look at what he's doing, and understand, wow, I didn't put my guys in a position to be successful. And if he, if he's really the coach that he say he is, then he has to do a better job of getting those guys in that position. Very Andy Reedish of you, Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> better exactly. job, put me in better positions. Uh, but it sounds like, look, Andy was pretty straightforward and dry, uh, but but what he was saying was true. We need to do a better job coaching wise, and I think that's something. When you're watching the Eagles, I think you, they, they were poorly, they were not prepared on offense yesterday. They were very very um, basic. That that team was ill prepared offensively yesterday. Let me go to defense and get your thoughts. Obviously, when there's a man that makes the money Byron Maxwell makes, he's going to get looked at. Um, is he anywhere close to what you thought they were getting? Oh, my goodness. Hell no. I mean, that's the bottom line. He's not even close to being the, the player in which we thought we were getting from from Seattle. And it has a lot to do with, you know, you're asking a guy that's not comfortable with doing what they're asking him to do. I mean, he, they're asking him to be a shutdown corner. He's not a shutdown corner. He's a, he's, he's a, a, a cover three corner. He's graded at putting his hand on the guy, backing off, and then play him in his hip. He hasn't been able to do that because Coach Davis wants him to be a man-to-man, bump-and-run, reroute the receiver type of player. He's not a Revis. He's not going to give you Revis Island, you know. So, I mean, you can't ask him to do something that he's ill-equipped to do. I don't know if he has the skill set to do that, but I do know that he's a lot better than what he's portraying in his defense. And I think that he also needs to be put in position so he can be successful. So, so uh, we, I mean, we it's, so again, like Williams last year, people couldn't stand him, and, and he was getting land based and everything. Same with Fletcher. Those two guys are starting, by the way, on two pretty good teams. Um, so, is it the scheme on defense, or is it the talent? I, I, I think it's more so. I, I'm not. I'm not even going to say a combination of both. I think it's basically coaching fundamentals. You know, are these guys fundamentally? Um, capable of running what you want to run. If the fundamentals that these guys possess are not conducive to the defense you're trying to run, then whose fault is it? Is it the coach for not putting them in a position where they can be successful, or is it the player that has the uh, inadequacy of trying to run a defense in which he's not equipped I mean, I think it's the coach. You know, maybe you need to put your guys in a better position. Bring the safety over. Bracket a guy here and there. I mean, you know, great players aren't always one on one type of player. Maybe they need a little help. And and it's obvious that you know Maxwell needs some help to 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 really um, flourish as a player. Uh, Barrett Brooks is with us. Uh, don't forget, check out uh, Barrett every morning, six to eight on uh, Breakfast on Broad on the Comcast Network. Uh, always breaking it down here with Barrett's breakdown. We've got a lot to look at here. Obviously, moving forward, um, they're going to play the Jets this week, and it, it looks like a gloom and doom situation with this offensive line. Is this something that they can do in a week's time? Can they make a – because, I was look, you saw Tampa give up 42 in week one. They go on the road and win in week two. We saw so many teams that looked awful in win week one win in week two. So is this something that next week, by the time they play the Jets on Sunday, that they can fix? And I guess the offensive line is the biggest problem that they need to get up to speed by Sunday. Yeah, well, that's something that comes over uh, 
Uh, it, it's not a, it, you can't even do it probably in a year. You know, this is something that you play together for years in order to get this cohesiveness, this camaraderie together. Um, a quick example, when I went up to Green Bay, um, I for, when I first got to the locker room, those guys really didn't even talk to me because they had been together for so many years. They had played uh, together probably five years each one of those guys, you know, five years together, they were all drafted together, they played together, became this unit. In fact, they wouldn't even let me go in and play any of the reindeer games because I wasn't a part of the fold. It wasn't until we went into the game against North Carolina and I was forced to play because Rivera got hurt and I came in a left guard and I was put in a position where they wouldn't even give me any calls, you know, and it took, um, you know, Brad Favre cracking a joke um, on me and then him showing approval that he approved me, that they then started to give me the calls. And from that point on, I was kind of accepted. I was able to go to the old line dinners and things of that nature. Hmm. Not to say that I needed to or I wanted to, because at that point I was already established as a player in the league. But, you know, after that point, you know, I started playing better because I started getting the calls that these guys were making. I understood. And it took me a while to get acclimated in what they were doing as a player. So, you know, I was a little seasoned vet, so I, I, I really grasped that a little easier than probably Andrew Garner's going to do because he hasn't had the amount of snaps that I had. I've been starting for six years going into that situation. He hasn't started any, I mean, uh, probably, what, one one year last year in which he got some quality starter reps. It took me six years to be able, be able to even get in and be cohesive with those hmm. guys. When you have younger guys like that that haven't had the, the opportunity to go in and, 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 and go in with live bullets and understand what can happen and where a safety lines up, where a linebacker lines up, those are things you learn, well, you know, trial by fire, and they yeah. haven't gotten those things yet. Even Barbary, who's a seasoned vet, hasn't got those type of rep, quality reps consistent enough to make those type of calls to be consistent with the with the left tackle and with the center. Um, so looking forward, is the offensive line the biggest issue this team has, or is it other? Uh, I, I think the offensive line is an issue because it all starts with the offensive line. Regardless of what people say, it always starts up front from the defensive line and the offensive line. When those guys start playing better, this team will look a lot better and be look a lot different. Sam Bradford has the capability to be a very, very good quarterback if he's kept uh, upright and also if he has a chance to mature with this offense and not be hurried and put in a position where he becomes gunshot because he's getting hit so much from the offensive line. I said uh, I tweeted this out, Barrett. I would like to see Bradford with Mathis, Harriman's, Jackson, and Macklin. <laughs> he might be pretty oh, good. He if might you, be pretty good with those that, guys. I, I mean, I would ask, I would actually mention him among the you know guys like the Ben Roethlisberger or, or, or maybe even a, a Breeze type of caliber of player if he has the framework around him at the offensive line to, to to make those type of calls. Well, a lot of cohesion. a lot of people are are pointing at his record eighteen thirty one and one and say, look, there's a reason this guy's eighteen thirty one and one. Maybe his talent is there, but he just. Did you like his body language? He, did he look like a confident player to you? Because to me, even if you're struggling or whatever, sometimes guys are like, hey, let's go, let's go. We got. He looked like a defeated guy out there yesterday. Yeah, he kind of made me mad because as the quarterback, as the leader of this team, as the face of this franchise at this point, you have to take it upon yourself to go in and say, hey, guys, let's go. Put it on me. Let's ride. Okay, the offensive line, you guys are playing well, but, hey, we got to do something. And tell me what you want to do. Let me help you, and then you. I know you will then help me. And I didn't see that from him. I didn't see him with that at that leadership role inside the hull. In fact, he almost looked like um, a deer in headlights, you know, out there on the field. He, it, I'm not going to say he looked lost, but he didn't feel. I didn't feel as though he was fully invested in trying to win the game. Just an expression of body language that I saw. He displayed during the game. Just didn't look confident. Uh, on the other side, you had a guy like Murray who was very passionate and fired up, and you could tell he was leaving it all out there. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. Why get rid of Shady if you're going to run the same plays? Uh, Murray is not a guy who should be running sweeps and stuff, but they can't get the push up the middle to really you know, do what they want to do in the run game as evident that they you know, they try to throw the ball twice on third and one or down on the goal line. They, they just have, Chip Kelly, as he displayed to you, has no confidence in the run game. Well, he has no cost of run game. They're supposed to be a run oriented team. So he can't really, you know, point fingers at anybody but himself. 
These are the men he chose to go out and be on this team, to lead this team. And the fact that they aren't playing the way he thought they were going to be playing, that he thought that they was going to, that he would have the opportunity to turn things around and, and kind of guaranteed that things would turn around with his guys under the fold, then it has a lot to do with him. You know, he may point the finger at the off of the line or everywhere else, but guaranteed, rest assured, every point of the finger that he points, he has three more pointed back to him because he's the guy that pulled the trigger. He's the guy that made the decision to make them starters. He's the guy that brought these guys in or allowed them mm. to stay there. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's Chip Kelly's it's ship. And, you know, I mean, if he's going to sink or swim, it's all according to – his decision making to put him in this position. I guess on the plus side, defense played well. Uh, again, I feel bad for them guys out there. Eighty-five plays, but they did play well. I think they just ran out of gas late in that game uh, to give up that touchdown. Uh, obviously, where uh, Maxwell gets burned, there's no safety help behind them. But uh, defense played well. That was the positive that I took from an awful Sunday afternoon here in the Delaware Valley. Uh, Barrett Brooks tomorrow morning on Breakfast on Broad. I'm sure plenty more uh, breakdown on this game. And, of course, every Monday here with Barrett's Breakdown on 97.3. That's 6 to 8 on the Comcast Network with Barrett Brooks. All right, buddy. We'll talk soon. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one now.